I've heard you go at cardio, mm -hmm. and this is like the dream for the gym, bro, because we all don't like to do cardio. Mm -hmm. Good. And I've heard you, yeah, this is fascinating because you're like a godsend to us. It's like, wait, he said we don't have to do, because all you hear, cardio is good for the heart. You have to do it, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Can you explain, I guess, why cardio is, you would argue it's not necessary at all, correct? Formally speaking. I, I, would, I would go further than that, and I would suggest that the the average person and most athletes and certainly hypertrophy athletes muscle builders should absolutely not do cardio here is why oh man probably when you listen to some person that did an undergraduate degree 20 years ago or even recently because they're still teaching this in human physiology will say you have three muscle fiber types type one type 2a and type 2b sometimes called type 2x Mm -hmm. false no such thing is in fact true you have a continuum of muscle fibers that exist from one end to the other the differences between those muscle fibers being not only the enzymes that are expressed within those muscle cells the way those muscle cells like to work the, the substrates they like to oxidize for energy etc there are also differences in the myosin chain is it light chain is it heavy chain is it somewhere in between the diameter of the fibers themselves are trainable. That's how you get hypertrophy happening, by lifting heavy weights requiring that to occur. It's not because you're gaining more muscle fibers. You're not. You're gaining bigger ones by training them mm -hmm. to be bigger. And you train them to be bigger by asking them to overcome the biggest resistance you possibly can. In the case of hypertrophy training, you're looking for 8 to 10 rep maximum, two working sets. Big compounds, please. No isolation work. You don't need body splits until you're over 200 pounds. You can do your whole mm. body every time, and you should probably not do that more than three times a week, and certainly not on consecutive days. But that's all another. Right. That's all for another day. Right. right. Here's what you do when you do cardio. Long endurance work for an hour or more at a time, whatever, at a moderate intensity. Mm -hmm. Those muscle fibers that you trained yesterday to become massive by doing that eight rep maximum set, you're now training them to get smaller again. Really? It's antagonistic. Interesting. So don't do it. Secondly, if you do hours and hours and hours of cardio for years and years and years, that will predispose your cardiac tissue, your heart, to become hypertrophy. The actual heart muscle gets bigger and it gets so big that it starts interfering with its own function and you start ending up with a higher likelihood, it seems, of cardiovascular problems. So from that vantage point, you would you would say that essentially cardio is going to inhibit or hinder muscle growth. That's yes. correct? Yes. Really? Wow. Yes. Wow. Interesting. So I have a treadmill under my desk here, which is very convenient. I could never, I don't know how people go to the gym and walk for three hours straight. I'd lose my mind. Mm -hmm. But I was walking probably six, seven miles a day for months straight. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if this relates to exactly what you were saying, but I noticed by the time I got to my show, my legs look like smaller by the time I got mm -hmm. to the stage. Okay. Like it so, looked like they yeah. had atrophied. All right. You know it, what I mean? That may well have happened, but it sounds like I need to clarify what is cardio and what I mean by saying cardio and don't do cardio. Was oh, is this going to be aerobic and anaerobic, this whole thing? Well, we could get to that, but okay. what I'm going to say is training is work that is at your maximum current capacity. Mm -hmm. So in other words, your 8RM resistance for any given exercise, that's the weight you should pick up and do. Okay, sure, you're going to do a warm-up set. I get that. And right. then you do two working sets, right? And maybe you do an 8 and then a 4 because you're actually doing a pyramid. Mm -hmm. Don't do drop sets. That's a dumb idea. Because like drop, drop sets are about volume and hypertrophy training is not about volume oh, oh you're gonna oh people are gonna be common Sorry, I, I disagree with me. no i i agree i yeah. i tell my audience all the time it's, mm. it's about quality not quantity but like Correct. Th there is this there is this fixation among well you, you've made some videos about mike israel have you ever seen some of his recommendations for volume mike israel is a fucking imbecile oh sorry about go ahead, that. Mark, go ahead. no no i i don't i've, I've come to kind of mm. kind of agree with you yeah, yeah. That's just my opinion. Doesn't have to be anybody else's, but it's an opinion based on twenty years of experience as an exercise physiologist. Whatever. Mm, yeah, I wouldn't trust Mike as retail on anything. I wouldn't listen to a damn thing he's got to say on any topic. But that's for another day. Anyway, so that's training. Exercise is incidental movement. 
i.e. walking. You can do as much of that as you like without probably dragging your muscle fibers the wrong way. That's fine. Mm -hmm. What I mean by cardio is that stuff in the middle, that zone two stuff, the stuff that's like 130 to 170 beats per minute sort of stuff at a steady cadence, cycling, jogging, swimming, cycling, whatever it is, at that kind of intensity, that middle zone, stay the f out of there. That's what I'm saying. Walk as much as you like, exercise properly in the gym, quality and not quantity, stay the hell out of here. I hope that's clear. Yeah, I actually, I made a video a while ago. It's called Why Lifting Weights is Always Better Than Cardio. Because I think just logically, like you get not just, you know, besides just muscle growth, you get, you know, you can improve bone uh, density, all mm -hmm. these other things that come with it. Mm -hmm. That goes into the next thing too, because I've heard you talk about aerobic and anaerobic. I yeah. also, I kind of came to this conclusion myself, just even reading my own personal training books. It's like, what do they say? It's um anaerobic, you rely on what? Stored glycogen, that's how they commonly define it. And then aerobic is like oh you're relying on oxygen that's loosely it right it's like i don't okay. see how you could yeah. do one without the other it All seems right. like you here's the thing again you know how you were taught three different muscle fiber types and that was completely nonsense the same is mm -hmm. true of they tell you you've got three different energy systems you've got an aerobic system and two anaerobic systems one of which is the lactic lactic system and the other one is the alactic system absolute f nonsense you have one and one energy system only, and those three things I've just mentioned are three gears, all of which are absolutely dependent upon each other in a muscle cell. Every muscle contraction of every muscle fiber in your body, of all muscle fiber types, absolutely requires glycogenolysis to actuate and affect the sliding filament theory that causes muscle contraction to occur. No muscle glycogen, no muscle contraction, period will not work. In fact, you'll have irreversible muscle tetanus and cellular death within four and a half minutes, basically. You have mitochondria, which oxidize substrates to produce ATP oxidatively. All muscle cells require those too. If you could magically get in there and pluck out the mitochondria instantaneously out of a muscle cell, it would twitch once or maybe twice, depending on the muscle fiber morphology then the glycogen at that stage will be completely worn out gone and irreversible muscle tetanus and death within four and a half minutes of that muscle cell do it to all of your cells at once and you'll die within four and a half minutes now how do we get energy shuttled from a mitochondria to the sliding filaments well that's what the pcr system is it's the gear in the middle so there is no such thing as anaerobic exercise in humans or any multicellular organism actually the only organisms that are anaerobic are organisms that live in the absence of oxygen, single-celled bacteria. Everything else requires oxygen to live. You do not have an anaerobic capacity. You do not have an anaerobic threshold. You do not have the ability to work your muscles without all three of those systems, plus a few other systems as well that are kind of ancillary to that that I haven't even mentioned because... That's a whole nother discussion yeah. by itself. Yeah.